Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, to Biking Roots. So we are a small bike shop in a super mountainous area in Spring, Texas. No, just kidding. We don't have any mountains, but we have some decent trails and it's fun. We like mountain bikes. We like to talk about mountain bikes. And today we're going to talk about a mountain bike with a motor and a battery. So maybe you've been mountain biking for a little while. Maybe you're getting a little older and you're like, you know what? I want to go further, faster. I can't keep up. So I need some assistance an e-bike can come into play there. Or, which happened to me this week, uh, one of your friends says, hey, you should come riding with us on the e-bikes. And I'm like, uh, I don't really have an e-bike right now. And since I don't have an e-bike, I was not invited. So you may feel like you're getting cast out from some of your friends because now maybe they have e-bikes and you don't. So if you wanna get back in the friend group or if you wanna go fast on the trails and or physically you just can't, an EMTB or e-bike might be for you. So the one we're talking about today is the uh, Marin Alpine Trail, and this is the uh, E2 version. So this is a enduro e-bike based on the normal Marin Alpine Trail. A few years ago, I did a review on the E1, which I had for a couple months before I sold it, and I haven't had an e-bike since. So I do miss it. After uh, bedding in the brakes on this one in the parking lot, I'm like, ah, I should get an e-bike again. They are a lot of fun. So first, let's get the cons out of the way on e-bikes. Uh, they're expensive, so you may get in trouble with your significant other. Number two, they're heavy, uh, so you may break your back trying to put them on a rack. Uh, they're just awkward to move around. Number three, they're a little more complicated, so you have a battery, lithium battery, a big lithium battery. You have a motor. Um, you're gonna go through brake pads faster. Um, you won't wanna probably ride your normal bike because you, and that's kinda happened to me, where you go flying through the trail so fast and then you get back on your normal bike and you're like, uh, this is kinda boring. But there are a lot of pros that make e-bikes a lot of fun. So let's go over the specs and the features of this Alpine Trail E2. So the Alpine Trail E comes in three different versions now. You have the base E, then you have the E1, then you have this E2. They're all aluminum. They no carbon fiber options. Uh, if you want less travel, the Rift Zone is your next option. They actually have some e-bikes as well. I haven't actually been able to look at one of those yet, but similar price structure, just less travel. All right, so let's talk about some of the features of the frame, and then we'll get into some of the components. All right, so as I stated earlier, this is an aluminum frame, very slack, 63 degree head tube angle. You have a 78 degree seat tube angle, so you can get a pretty long dropper in there, which is nice. Um, it is heavy. I weighed this one about 55 pounds uh, with pedals is what I came in at. Uh, it does have Cush Core in it, which I'll talk about that later. They have bump stops on both sides here to protect your fork and frame because it's so wide right here. The battery is integrated in there, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, down here you have your Shimano EP8 motor. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You have Marin's linkage system here and you have a pivot back here. And as far as your derailleur hanger, and I'm gonna mention this just because of some of the new technology out now, this is a normal hanger, so it's not UDH. So no, you can't do SRAM's new transmission, which some e-bike people may like. Uh, so yeah, sorry, you gotta stick with normal derailleur and normal, obviously you could do wireless shifting on this, uh, if you want it, even with this cassette, but you can't do transmission. As far as mounts go, you got water bottle here and not really room. They don't have any other storage or anything on here, but the color is pretty cool. They used to come into gray. Now it's like a tan color. And this is kind of the slightly revised Alpine Trail E, which I'll talk about since it's different than the one that I had. So for sizes, uh, you can get small up to extra large. On reach numbers, you're on a small, you're 445, all the way up to 505 millimeters of reach on the XL. This is a large, so you're at 485. I feel like it didn't feel like 485 though. I've had these before and I've had the mediums. The large actually doesn't feel too big for me, even though it's technically way past my reach. So I don't know what's going on, but you have to get on one. Maybe it's because it's a mixed wheel, I don't know. All right, first let's talk about suspension. So up front on this E2, you get top of the line Fox 38, and this is the Performance Elite version. So nice 38 millimeter stanchions, really beefy, which isn't a bad thing since you got a big heavy bike. And so it's nice to have a lot of stiffness and structure in your fork. And this has the Grip 2 damper. So you have high and low speed compression adjustments here, your air on this side, 
You have your little bleed valves here so you can equalize pressure if you're in altitude and you build up a lot of negative pressure. You can and then over here you have your high and your low speed uh, rebound adjustments. And for your shock you have the Fox DHX2 Performance Elite uh, coil. So this is a on the small and mediums you get a 350 pound spring. On the large and XL you get a 450 pound spring. Feels good to me even at my weight at like 175 pounds. Obviously it's going to depend on your riding style on uh, you know how beefy of a spring you want. But because it's a performance elite lots of compression and rebound adjustments which makes it nice to dial it in if you know what you're doing. If not um, just leave it alone. For your crank set you get a Shimano Dior XT linked with a 38 tooth ring so you can get some nice speed action. And these are only 160 millimeters long which is nice. Uh, you have a pretty low uh, bottom bracket and so since they sit pretty low you squat down nice to have shorter uh, crank arms which is tends to be popular on e-bikes and in the back you have the Shimano XT uh, derailleur uh, with the clutch obviously and then uh, for your cassette you have the Dior uh, 1050 one tooth cassette I thought well maybe they should have gone to a nicer cassette but since weight isn't really kind of an issue with e-bikes they just went with the less expensive one and these do tend to sometimes wear out faster, so instead of getting a high-end cassette that you're gonna wear out faster, save some money and get the Dior. And for your motor, this is the Shimano EP801. So the EP8 is a 250 watt motor with 85 newton meters of torque, so plenty of power to power this thing around. And the battery is a 630 watt uh, integrated battery, so lots of range. Earlier, I was going through the different settings for the range, and yeah, it was obviously it's going to depend on your riding style and speed and weight and a lot of conditions. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. But yeah, it was giving me some crazy estimates, like into the 100 mile range on eco mode, which I don't know if I believe it, but yeah, it was uh, definitely more than I would have thought. So battery life, it's showing in boost mode 39 miles, trail mode 59 miles and eco mode 118 miles yeah that seems i mean that's great but i kind of don't believe that so if you need to charge your battery uh back down there you have a port to be able to charge it on the bike or you can remove the battery here which i'll show a video showing how to remove that all right so if you need to remove the battery there's a little rubber plug that you pull out right here and then inside there there's a little hole so then you have a four millimeter and you'll feel it kind of lock in, just turn it to the right like that. And then it basically releases it partially and then you stick your finger in there and that releases the hinge and you pull out the battery like so. And then under here is this, this is where you have your wiring for the motor and your dropper post and your gear cable. So anytime you need to change any cables, uh, dropper post or your derailleur cable, you have to remove the battery, which isn't a big deal, then just kind of feed some slack through there. Isn't super easy, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad either. And then to put it back in, just kind of balance it like that till it goes on its little thing, and then pop it in like that. All right, most people, you're gonna charge it here through the little flap, so just pull that out. All right, then you just stick it in there and plug it into the wall. All right, let's talk, since we're talking about the, uh, the E-Drive system, let's talk about some of the controls here. So here's the new control. This has changed on the new updated version, the old Alpine E2 and E1. They just had like a little thumb thing here, and then they had a, the control here. So this is the newer one. You have a power button here, so you hold that down. That will turn on. And you can customize it with, you have a little rocker switch here, so if you push it, then it goes to some different screens here. So you can uh, divide it up by speed, your RPM and cadence, distance, your odometer, uh, go through time. So basically your little mini trip computer here. And then these rocker paddles here are for, to select your different, so blue is eco mode. So if you just look by color, you can tell eco is blue, green is trail, and then yellow is boost mode. So eco is going to give you a little bit of pedal assist, uh, give you the max range, not as much torque, conserve battery. Trail is kind of a nice balance, and I believe you can customize kind of your torque stuff now in the app. 
I haven't gone into the Shimano app in a while, but, and then boost is basically you're ready to party, forget battery life. I just want to go nuts and have fun. Some people stay in boost all the time. Um, I know some of my friends do. Others tend to stay in trail. I think I did for the most part, just because boost can get a little crazy. As far as connection goes, you have a little wire that comes down here and connects up under here. And then you have another wire that comes through here and this goes back to your motor, your battery, and then... And then it comes th through the brake line here, back over here, into here, where it's, there's a speed sensor in there. And that speed sensor, for one, what speed you're going, gives information back to the computer and the motor for uh, speed and torque. So 20 miles an hour is the max speed that you can go on these, being a class one, which is pedal assist only, and no throttle. All right, so that's pretty much it on the controls. Oh, there is like a look, looks like a little headlight switch. Um, I don't know if you can hook up. Someone can comment below if they know, but I th maybe you can hook up a headlight or something to it. I don't know, or maybe it's display brightness. It doesn't change, so I don't know what that does. And I can't seem to figure out the walk mode. I'm sure there's a walk mode, but I don't know which one it is so that you can like push up a hill or something if you get stuck. Uh, as far as your handlebars, you have 800 millimeter uh, race face effect uh, handlebars with a little bit of a rise, 20 degree rise, and a 35 mil clamp. Also comes with a race face stem, which is cool. Uh, Marin brand lock-on grips, uh, Shimano SLX shifter, and you got your Transex uh, dropper lever, Transex dropper, and Marin branded saddle. SLX brakes, you have a nice uh, short one finger lever, which is nice with some adjustment here. All right, since you got a big heavy e-bike, you need a lot of power. So SLX four piston with 203 center lock uh, Shimano rotors up front. And in the back, same size, 203 millimeters, four piston center lock. So yeah, they feel good uh, for Shimano brakes if you're a Shimano fan. All right, let's talk wheels and tires. I don't know if I said it earlier, but this is a mixed wheel uh, e-bike. So 29 up front. 27 in the back, 27 and a half in the back, which should make it very fun and uh, be able to zip around the corners, but still go over stuff pretty easily. As far as your wheel set, this is just a Marin branded uh, rim with the uh, Shimano hub front and rear, uh, 148 boost, and then Shimano hub up here, 15 by 110 millimeter boost. And for your tires, in the back, you have 27.5 by 2.8, and this is the DHR2 with uh, EXO Plus protection. So this is a real beefy fat tire in the back, which sometimes you go fatter in the front, but on e-bikes, chunkier in the back. And then in the front, they went with the Asagai 29 by 2.5 EXO protection. So Asagai, lots of traction. And one cool thing is these come with Kush Core. So if you don't know what Kush Core is, it's basically a liner in here that gives you a lot more sidewall protection. Potentially, you could ride it out if you flat somewhere. Uh, it basically fills a big chunk of your tire with a squishy material that can help with uh, cornering. So yeah, that's usually a couple hundred bucks, I believe. So it comes with it, which is cool. Already installed, all you have to do is add sealant, which it also comes with sealant and the valve. So you're good to go. Well guys, that's pretty much all the specs of this Alpine Trail E2. Uh, what do you guys think? So yeah, in the market, you have lots of choices now in e-bikes, uh, lots of different motor brands now. Uh, they all have their pros and cons. Shimano's been around for quite a while. Uh, so I would think they've perfected their game. Um, each brand, you know, they've had some hits and misses and some issues, but overall, I think um, they should be pretty reliable. So let me know if you have any questions on this Alpine Trail or or if you have a question on how it might compare to another e-bike that you're shopping it against. Um, if you're not good at like comparing specs and features, let me know. All right, guys. Well, that's going to end today's video on the Alpine Trail E2. Uh, hope you guys liked the video, got something out of it. If you did, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to Biking Roots if you want to see more of this content. And I hope you guys are doing well. We'll see you out on the trail. Take care. Bye.